It's an honour to be asked to be part of tonight's Asian Australian Leadership Summit. I'm sorry that the Senate sitting means I can't join you. The ANU, Asia Link and PwC have done a tremendous job in organising this event and I'm pleased to celebrate the successes of the 40 Under 40 Most Influential Asian Australians Award winners, finalists and shortlisted applicants. Each and every one of you has an inspirational story to share, so be justly proud of your achievements. When I was asked to record this message, a reference was made to how my fellow Asian Australians can best break through the bamboo ceiling, or as is the case for my fellow female Asian Australians, how best to muster the strength to bust through two ceilings. Well, I want to share with you two words, recognition and representation. Recognition of where we came from, how far we've come and what still must be done. Our nation needs stronger representation of Asian Australians and other cultures that haven't traditionally been represented, not only in Parliament, but across all aspects of the Australian community. I came to Australia from Malaysia as a child in 1977. It was a hard time to leave a familiar place and come to somewhere where you and your family were seen as different. Racial abuse wasn't unusual. We've come a long way in the years since that time. Our community is more diverse and our national identity more inclusive. There have been times when Australia's past attitudes on race have been brought back to life. So we must share this imperative to stand against prejudice and discrimination. Each time a public figure or someone in a senior position champions the rights of those who are marginalised, they give courage to others to do the same. And we should always be growing the Australian family. We aspire to include all. And this kind of inclusion represents real leadership in modern Australia. Australia is an independent multicultural nation confident of our place in the world. We know who we are, an inclusive, diverse multicultural nation which draws strength from the ways of the immigrants who have come to this continent and from our first peoples. Multiculturalism makes our country better not only to enrich our lives at home, but also how we are seen on the world stage. And recognition of Australia's place in Asia is only one example of the importance of that multiculturalism. Now, engagement with Asia requires working across government, with business, the education sector, industry, and across the community to deepen our ties, improve our Asia capability, and enable more opportunities for Australians. And when we harness the diversity of Australia, it improves our capability at home and makes us better equipped to engage in a multipolar, multifaceted world. So you may ask what's next? What can we collectively do to pick up the baton and help nourish this growth? Well, when I first entered Parliament, there were few Asian Australians in the building, including the woman who worked in the library. And despite Asian Australians making up about 15% of the population, there are still only four federal parliamentarians with Asian heritage. It's hard to be what you can't see. So we need to change this. And I always hope that my time in public life plays a part in helping others to see their own potential. Australia is different today from when I first arrived in this country. It has become more inclusive and continues to do so. But there's still plenty of room for improvement. Still more room for our community to come together even more. So I want to see this generation drive the change needed to address the barriers that Asian Australians still face. I know you here tonight recognise the challenge and by taking part in events like this summit are already fearlessly facing it head on. You represent the future, a better future. If you're given a platform, use it to help inspire others of different identities and background to reach their potential. So thank you and best wishes for the summit.